It's time to take two with Rod Decker. Good morning. We're talking about Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya, particularly about Afghanistan. The president made a speech this week. On my right is Mr. John Cattell, who's an organizer for Obama, a grassroots organizer here in Utah, thinks the president is doing a very good job. On my left is Rocky Anderson, used to be mayor of Salt Lake City. He is now an activist. He thinks Obama's not doing a very good job at all. The president made a speech. We have a CBS story here about the speech. President Obama heads to Fort Drum in New York today, a base that's home to many U.S. troops now fighting in Afghanistan. By the end of next summer, many of those soldiers will be back home. The president announced he's winding down the nearly 10-year war. 33,000 U.S. troops will withdraw by September 2012. The first 10,000 will be home by the end of this year. Our mission will change from combat to support. By 2014, this process of transition will be complete, and the Afghan people will be responsible for their own security. The president says the quick drawdown is because of the success U.S. troops have achieved fighting the Taliban and killing Osama bin Laden. The pace of the pullout has been debated for months. Some military commanders and some lawmakers are concerned it could hurt the progress the U.S. has made in Afghanistan. With the Taliban stumbling, we need a strategy designed to knock the enemy to the mat, not give them a breather. In Colorado Springs, families welcomed home loved ones last night and said the president's decision is cause for celebration. I'm all for it. Nobody should have to be separated from their families for a year, 15 months. Right now, there are 100,000 U.S. forces on the front lines in Afghanistan fighting a war that's costing taxpayers $2 billion a week. Mr. Cattell. I, I, I'm surprised, frankly, that things haven't gone faster in Afghanistan. When I listened to President Obama when he was a candidate, I thought he was going to get out quicker. Did you think he was going to get out more quickly? Well, it, when you're running as a candidate, and the information you have as a candidate makes it seem like you need to get out quicker. But when you actually become the president of the United States and you get all the um, intelligence information. Talks to the briefing. generals and says maybe we need to stay longer. And I think once, uh, once he's seen that information and once he got that data, I think he really realized that a surge is what we need and we probably need to stick around there a little bit longer um, to, to make sure that we're not retreating okay. with uh, um, a mess. When you're, we an Obama, you're an Obama man. You worked for him. You still, you're going to work for him again. Okay, some Obama supporters are disappointed. They say, I, I thought he was going to get out. You sound like you, he didn't get out, but it doesn't much bother you. It, it doesn't bother me. It, it, well, the, I, I understand where the opposition would have that idea. I, I, I understand the frustration that people have with, uh, with the war that started off in, in 2001. I understand where they're coming from, but I also understand where President Obama's position is right now as commander-in-chief. Boy, you? that is a classic explanation <laughs> as to why... President Obama has betrayed us in almost every single way, from being a candidate to being the president of the United States. He was going to close down Guantanamo. He was going to live according to the rule of law. And instead, he said, oh, let's just move on and forget about these war criminals. He was going to stop renditions. He was going to wind down the war rather than gear it up again. This man is l the least deserving recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize in the history of the Nobel. Now, now they and, gave it to him before yeah. he did all that stuff. That's right. They were hoping it's because he wasn't Bush, and that was good enough for them, I guess, at the time. And I think they were trying to sort of set the bar a little higher. But instead, at every opportunity, he has violated the Constitution. He's denied the rule of law. He's betrayed us entirely. I mean, this man, as candidate, before he won the, the Democratic nomination, pledged that he would join a filibuster if they were going to provide immunity to the telecom companies, and then he joined in the vote for that immunity okay. after he gets the nomination. Ren Ren rendition. I thought that rendition was, was gone. Rendition is not gone. You're wrong. We're still kidnapping and disappearing people and sending from them off. From America? Yes. Or from, no, or around, around the world. The, around the world. And, okay. and now 
they're sending them to Bagram Air Force Base saying that's within the field of combat. So now they don't even have the habeas corpus rights that President Obama, as a candidate, said he would honor. Okay, is there as much, re is there as much rendition now as there was under Bush, do you know? Well, the one thing President Obama did was he said, we're going to stop this Enhanced interrogation? Well, is that it's stopped? not enhanced interrogation. Enhanced means improved. What they were doing was torturing people purely and simply. Okay, but what President Obama that? has said, well, there, there have been some instances of torture, but President Obama has said, let's just move forward and forget about all those war crimes in the past. Did we say that at Nuremberg? Did we say that at the Japanese okay. war criminal so trials? So you're, you're mad Obama should have put Bush on trial? Obama should have told his attorney general, follow the law, and however things turn out, the rule of law means guessed, that much, and our Constitution means that much. You'd have now guessed that means a trial for Bush. Well, let me tell you, what, what President Obama said during what well, we're talking about inconsistencies that really can't be explained away as you want to, he said, as a matter of principle, this is a man who is a constitutional law professor. He knew that the War Power Clause of the Constitution, the War Powers Resolution, forbids a president from unilaterally committing troops to He's hostilities unless we're under attack or imminently under threat of attack. And look what he's done in Libya. We'll he has completely that. betrayed okay, you think that that's a, You think that's okay. Would you talk about rendition, about torture? Has Obama done, has, Ob has that gone forward under Obama the way Mr. Anderson says it went forward under Bush? I think uh, I think uh, uh, Rocky here probably has um, a much more um, extreme view, and he's using a lot of uh, phrases that are absolutes, and he is using phrases that make it seem like at every single opportunity Barack Obama has done something radically different than what he said, and I think that's actually incorrect. Okay. Uh, when, when it when it comes to rendition, when it comes to torture. He's actually, I mean, when it, when it comes to shutting down Guantanamo, once he becomes... Still open, the, right? It's still open, still open, but it's not necessarily as big of an issue to me as a supporter, just as general Joe public, to me, because I understand why it's still open. I, I, under, okay. I, I, I understand... Do you think, what, do you think, okay, you think it's a pretty good idea that it's open now? You think it's justified to be open now? I think, I think the reason why it's justifiable for it, for it to be open is if, if we closed it, if we closed Guantanamo right now, where would we move these these folks right now? Okay. And I do under, okay. and I do understand. Justified now was it justified when George Bush, when George W. Bush had it open? I actually feel that it was it, it was okay. justified you, to have it there. So at you that think time. it's there. that's my personal view? Okay. You know this <laughs> president who who speaks so beautifully about the rule of law out of one side of his mouth has actually proposed that he be given the power to point to anybody, including a U.S. citizen, and indefinitely detain them without charges, without a trial, and beyond what they, 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 beyond any, any limitation in terms of time. It could be up to a lifetime. President Obama, and if you don't, if you don't I, believe me, go back I, and watch his speeches, watch Rachel Maddow, they, just, just cream him for standing there and talking about the rule of law and then about indefinite okay. detention, the whole idea being that we're going to hold these people because they might pose a danger Lib in the future. Libya aside, has he violated the Constitution? He came in with a war. That war, the Congress had voted in some ways for, that, for, for, for those wars, and he continued them. Is that a violation of under, the Constitution? Under the Constitution, treaties, the Constitution, and laws passed by Congress are the supreme law okay. of the land. Okay. The, the uh, Convention Against Torture requires that any of the signatories, including the United States, were one of the countries okay. that, that was so most So you say constitution where he's violated, not continuing the war, that may, that may not be unconstitutional for him, but torture, as you say, where he's violated the law and of the And not holding people legally accountable for torture. It's required of every signatory under the Convention Against Torture that they prosecute or extradite people okay. for prosecution if they were responsible for torture. Ronald Reagan made it clear that's what the Convention Against Torture was all about. And you believe that all of the people who may have been involved in this, that you, what, what you say is torture, they say it is, and all of those people 
maybe should be on trial. They don't maybe say should it wasn't go to prison. torture. There, there they, are they people like enhanced Shane. interrogation. Well, they, they use that term, but nobody denies really that waterboarding is torture. Well, they know there are people who deny that. We have that. prosecuted our own servicemen during Vietnam, during the Philippine uprising in 1900. I don't think for, for water, waterboarding. For waterboarding, Absolutely somebody was for prosecuted. I didn't know that. We're going to take we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be back after this. We're back with Rocky Anderson, who thinks President Obama is doing a terrible job with wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya, and with John Cattile, an Obama activist, who thinks he's doing a very good job. Utah congressmen and senators, or Senator Mike Lee, uh, now are a little to President Obama, they're a little more dovish than President Obama. Sort of surprised me. They think we ought to be getting out fast and not getting in. We have this story. We should be bringing our troops home. Utah Republicans in Congress and the Senate say President Obama should move faster to get United States troops out of Afghanistan. Senator Mike Lee says the United States should leave a lot fewer than the 70,000 troops President Obama is planning to leave in Afghanistan. But I suspect that a, a, a counterterrorism presence right now might look more like, I don't know, somewhere in the 10 to 20, maybe 30,000 troop range. And while Utah Republicans are calling for faster withdrawal from Afghanistan, they say the president shouldn't be sending troops to Libya at all. And if the president wants authorization to go, he doesn't get it from the UN. He should be coming to the United States Congress, and he's failed to do that. Representative Rob Bishop notes House Republicans have told the president to justify American participation in Libya. And if the president doesn't, Congress may act. I think there will be an effort to try and defund his efforts. Okay, are you on Rob Bishop's side on this? Do you think they ought to defund the effort in Libya? No, I'll tell you what I think ought to be done. I think that the, the motives were absolutely correct. That, that through the United Nations, through NATO, but with congressional support as our Constitution requires, we should protect citizens from being slaughtered by the likes of Muammar Gaddafi. You're for what's being done in Libya, but you think it needs to be procedurally a little different in it's terms of legal... It's not just procedurally a little different. It's what our Constitution requires okay. and what the War but Powers Resolution you, requires. You might be with John McCain on this one then. He's no. got, he's got a, a, a resolution to authorize the president for a year. That's exactly right, and it's what should have been done from the outset. And I agree with candidate Obama that the president cannot, under the Constitution, we've unilaterally quote, commit American troops. We've got troops. a quote from him on that. Okay, Libya. Okay, now that, this surprises me. Obama goes in, he says, I'm going to get us out of these wars. He went in with two, now we got three. Five. Where's the other two? We're bombing Pakistan and we're bombing Yemen. Okay, okay. We don't, we don't have five wars. Okay, going okay, on. But okay, <laughs> okay, but we got people, okay, three if you three, and, and three counts in Libya. Three wars going okay, on you, can you say Libya's uh, not a war? I, I say Libya's not a war. And, I, and what we have taking place, nobody could have predicted the Arab Spring. Okay. Nobody could, nobody could have, nobody could have predicted um, that Mubarak, that, that Tunisia was going to fall, causing Egypt, yeah. uh, um, causing Egypt to fall. And and what we what we're really seeing is an unprecedented opportunity. But not just an opportunity, but what we're looking at is we're, we're seeing like. What's, what's taking place in, in Egypt and Tunisia is now taking place in Libya. And if we had, if we had evidence that there was going to be imminent genocide, which is kind of the information he that probably we probably going to kill people. If, he, if, if Gaddafi I, and, wins, he'll probably and, kill some people. Why aren't we going into Syria? Why aren't we going into yeah, Syria? Do you think we should? Do you think we? Do you think we ought to be in Syria? I, I think. I think that, that the international there, a, community there, there, needs to put an end to the killing in Syria just as I think we need to do the same thing in Libya, but only according to our constitution okay, and according to the United Nations You, 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 and, he, you and he agree on Libya. You say we ought to do it and Congress ought to get behind the president. This is What we're doing in, in Libya is actually operational support. We're also offering intelligence support. We're offering refueling support. As you see in Barack Obama mentioned yesterday, 
We're, we're not. We we're don't not have committing troops. troops. On we the were ground. not committing troops. Okay, on the ground. I would still call them not, hostilities. I mean, it, just you look at it; they look pretty hostile to well, me. But, it, but is it us? Is it, is it our fighter planes bombing anybody? You sound like it, Harry Reid, who it, says it, because it, we don't have it, boots it, on the ground and because it's going to be they're, over they're, soon, they're, yeah, it I doesn't do sound qualify like Harry as hostilities under the War Powers Resolution. America is not. That would mean the atom bomb. You drop an atom bomb, that's not hostility. Okay, you got the floor. He's got the floor. What do you? Rocky propose that we do what um, if, if you the Arabs the, the thing that's Comply taking place the, 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 the okay he says beyond, he says beyond we're doing the, the right con, thing we just need congressional support right beyond I, the Constitution I think President Clinton did the right thing uh, 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 okay now wait okay okay, the okay. With the Constitution. okay Rocky Anderson's got the floor you think you think we ought to be in Libya we ought to be in Syria uh, and, but we ought to have congressional support in the declaration of, of whatever it takes. And you need to go to the United Nations under the United Nations Charter and get the Security Councils. Okay, we've done that okay. in Libya. That's right. And, and, and China, Russia, uh, Brazil, South Africa, will they, they, will, will India, they, will they, they have opposed at the same kind of resolution in terms of Syria. So we don't go into Syria? So, so politics is calling the shots. All, at the the United politics Nations always once calls again. the shots. Okay, are, are you, are, would, would, if Congress authorized Syria, would you go into Syria without the United with, Nations or would you wait? No. It, it, without, would be absolutely, without, okay. it would be absolutely in opposition to international. Okay. It would be in opposition okay. to the Kellogg Band. Now back to, back to Representative Bishop. Representative Bishop says we're going to cut off funds for if, if he doesn't explain. If he doesn't have congressional support, ought funds to be cut off if he doesn't get congressional support? Ought yes, con under our Constitution, absolutely. Okay. It's so a terrible precedent, but the same thing really applied to Iraq because even though they had a congressional resolution, it was a before the fact blank check for the president to decide whether we're going to go to war. You cannot change the Constitution by legislation. Congress has to okay. determine based on contemporaneous facts whether we're going to go Two, to war. 200 wars, five Five declarations, as is the count that I have. Well, I think. more than five declarations, but as to five wars, okay, you're absolutely okay. right. Okay, and okay. So usually, as wars go, uh, what they did in Iraq was was probably above average for the last, for, for at least since World War II. Probably above average in terms of Congress saying we authorize. No, it. they chickened out. I mean, Hillary Clinton would even walk down the hallway to read the National Intelligence Estimate, which had she, she would have seen that there was vast disagreement in the intelligence community okay. about what Iraq was and wasn't doing. We've got a quote here from Barack Obama when he was a candidate. This is candidate Barack Obama when he's running for president. The president does not have power under the Constitution to unilaterally authorize a military attack in a situation that does not involve stopping an actual or imminent threat to the nation. Now, he evidently he said that to the Boston Globe. Do you think that he's violated, do you think that he's, that he's switched and said, except for Libya? No. I, I, I don't think he switched and said it. Okay. So he made an exception for Libya, and, and here is why. Because we actually are not committing troops into Libya, and we're That's actually true. not bombing anybody in Libya. Okay. We're, we're, what we're doing is we're offering intelligence support and operational Not backing support so he doesn't to need okay. NATO. And you've NATO talked about that. I've got a, uh, untrue. I've got a story here from 2006. We're going to play it. You're the star. History will rank as the worst presidency our nation has ever had to endure. Salt Lake Mayor Rocky Anderson said the Bush administration lied to deceive America into the war in Iraq. Five to 10,000 people turned out for an anti-war rally to hear the mayor and to march on the federal building where they handed in an indictment of President Bush saying his conduct is criminal. <laughs> Before the mayor talked, there were bans and speakers against the war and for a variety of issues. And we're here to tell America that the most Republican state in the country says no to Bush, no to Rumsfeld, no to Rice. Give us the truth! Give us the truth! 
The mayor gave a long speech, led the crowd in chants, and spoke against the Bush administration and against the news media, which he says have retold Bush lies. That our news media live up to its responsibility to ascertain and report the truth rather than acting like nothing more than a bulletin board for the lies and propaganda of a manipulative, dishonest federal government. Do you believe Obama's just as bad? No, I think what we've seen is President Obama, who we had so much hope for, we thought we were going to see real change. He's actually, we, I think most of us thought that the Bush administration was going to be this aberration, this really painful blip on our nation's history. President Obama, in so many instances, has institutionalized some of the worst abuses of the Bush administration. You said Bush was a war criminal or had committed crimes. He did. Do you, do you believe Obama is a war criminal, that he has committed war crimes? I th no, I, because he's done it with the international community. He's gone okay, to the that's United Libya, Nations. But, but you say renditions. You say he's continued uh, torture. Is he a war criminal? No, but he has allowed war criminals immunity. He's basically said That's the you Bush can commit crowd. war criminal you can commit these war crimes with impunity. That's a very dangerous precedent. He's completely betrayed the rule of law and he's betrayed our commitments under the Convention Against Torture and the Geneva Conventions. Commercial break. We'll be back after this. John Cattell, is President Bush a war criminal? Has President Obama countenanced war criminals? No, on both things. President Bush, I don't agree with his policy of how we, of the operational end of what happened when we went into Iraq. I don't agree with that. I don't, th and I know that President Obama does not agree with that. But to go back and, and call an elected president a war criminal for operational issues, it's over the top. This Rocky, one, okay. you, you gotta know that's over the top. Okay, I mean, and Mr. Yeah. Anderson, Mr. Anderson, you get the last He minute. authorized torture. He's agree, he's admitted that. That is a war crime under both our own domestic law, the War Crimes Act, and under international law. There's no question about it. We prosecuted and convicted people at Nuremberg for the same kinds of war crimes, and it was an aggressive war meaning that we weren't under attack. That is in violation. It, okay. Two secretaries general right, of the United right. Nations you, have you, said you it was think, against the law. We're out of time. Good morning. <laughs>